In this video, we'll look at the plotting of the aggregate demand curve and the factors that might cause this curve to shift. In microeconomics, we plot the demand curve with price and quantity on the axes, and it's downward sloping because of the law of demand. As price increases, quantity demanded will decrease and vice versa. But in macroeconomics, we're interested in aggregate demand. So there are some similarities here, but a lot of very important differences. So aggregate demand is not the demand for a product in an individual market, but the total demand across an entire economy. So in a football match with two legs, the aggregate score is the total across those two legs. And we've got the same thing here. It's the total across all of the markets in our economy. And importantly, we've no longer got price on the y-axis, but price level. So that's not the price of an individual good, but the average price level in the economy, what we use to calculate inflation. And on the x-axis, we've got not quantity, but real GDP or output, the total value of all of the output in an economy. So not the quantity of good of a good in an individual market. And so we don't label the curve D for demand, we label it AD for aggregate demand. It's really important to get that labeling right. The aggregate demand curve, like the demand curve, is downward sloping. So there'll still be an inverse relationship between average prices in an economy and total demand. Because as average prices fall, goods and services become more affordable and total demand in the economy will be higher. There's also an effect where it means more people from abroad are buying our exports rather than their home produced goods as the price level comes down. And also more UK consumers will substitute the cheaper UK products over the relatively more expensive exports as the price level falls as well. And all of that adds up to a downward sloping aggregate demand curve. But just like with demand, the position of the aggregate demand curve can change. So the total aggregate demand is made up of its components. So that's C plus I plus G plus X minus N, or consumer spending, investment, government spending, and net exports. So anything causing these to change will shift that aggregate demand curve. So let's take a few examples of these shifts. If we were to have an increase in interest rates, that will make saving more attractive, encouraging consumers to save their hard-earned cash instead of spending it, so consumer spending falls. And at the same time, it also makes borrowing more expensive, which discourages businesses from taking out loans to fund their investment. And with both consumer expenditure and investment falling, aggregate demand falls and the curve shifts to the left. If disposable income was to increase, that's quite a straightforward one. People have more money to spend and so consumption increases. And you could also have a knock on impact of rising business profits as a result of consumers spending more on businesses. And that might encourage further investment. And both of these effects mean aggregate demand would rise and the curve shifts to the right. Now, an exchange rate appreciation would make exports more expensive for consumers abroad, and so demand for exports falls. And at the same time, cheaper imports as a result of that appreciation means demand for imported goods rises. And together, this means that the X minus M part of the aggregate demand equation will come down, aggregate demand falls and shifts to the left. And then finally, an election looming might encourage the government to increase spending in the hunt for more votes. Increases in government spending part of the C plus I plus G plus X minus M equation would boost aggregate demand and shift the curve to the right.